If you live in a relatively prosperous country, the odds are you probably do some kind of recycling. You might separate your waste into different categories, like papers, plastics, glass, and metals. You could put leftover food together for composting and rinse old bottles and cans, assuming they'll be recycled, and that recycling will help reduce waste and protect the environment. But are you actually helping by recycling, or are you just wasting your time? Well, I'm going to go through and tell you what helps and what doesn't. And while I'll be basing most of this on data from the United States, much of it is still applicable to other countries. First, I'm going to give some context on recycling. To simplify it, the idea of modern recycling mostly emerged in the 1960s and 70s. Recycling has existed throughout essentially all of human history, but it mostly existed to get the most out of materials, like turning old flour sacks into clothing and reusing scrap metal. This was mostly a result of scarcity rather than any major sense of environmental consciousness, and modern recycling came as a response to the massive amounts of waste that was being produced during the era. Heavily industrialized economies began producing absolutely massive amounts of products, and accordingly huge amounts of garbage, like disposable cans, bottles, and other single-use products. To help deal with the crisis, there were a lot of programs and PSAs like the famous People Start Pollution, People Can Stop It tagline of a crying Native American man. So originally, recycling was more of a response to overflowing landfills and reducing waste, while the idea of altruistic recycling to protect the environment and the planet is more of an idea from the recent decades. So questionable public messaging or not, by the 1990s the rate of recycling rose to about 25% of waste, with officials setting goals like 50% or higher, and recently we've heard a lot of talk about reaching the zero waste goal. However, the national rate has been stuck at about 34% in the United States in recent years. So what's going on? Despite decades of policies and mandates, typically it's still more expensive to recycle household waste rather than send it to a landfill. Now the reasons why it's more expensive are complicated, but summing it up, the primary reasons are the high cost of labor, lower oil prices, and lack of demand for recycled materials. Recycling is a very labor-intensive process, because materials can't just be thrown into a pile and melted down. They need to be carefully sorted, often by hand into different categories like plastics, metals, organics, glasses, etc. And despite rising automation, it's still very expensive to pay for all the labor required, which is why the materials are often exported to be recycled in foreign countries with cheaper workers. The lower oil prices have reduced the demand for many materials like plastics, while also making it cheaper to manufacture materials like aluminum, making it less economical to recycle instead of making it from scratch. Now there is substantially less worldwide demand for recyclables. Originally, after materials were recycled, they obviously needed to go somewhere to be reused, and that was typically China. Recyclables were often exported to China to be sorted and processed due to the lower labor costs, and given they were already there, sold to them for use. China bought massive amounts of recycled plastics and metals like aluminum for everything from making children's toys to cars. However, due to a number of reasons, China is restricting the imports of recyclables. They had a lot of issues with contaminated recyclables of a very low quality being sent to them, and they had environmental concerns of their own. As well, China has developed economically a great deal over the last few decades, and no longer has a major need for large amounts of recycled materials. And wages in China have been rising as well, creating higher labor costs for foreign countries. In any case, due to these high associated costs, many recycling companies have been forced to shut plants and cancel plans for new technologies. Beyond just the cost though, the rate of recycling has also slowed because a lot of materials just aren't very good for recycling and don't actually contribute much to protecting the environment or saving money. For example, plastic bottles. There's a lot of promotion that recycling plastic helps lower greenhouse gases, and while that is technically true, Realistically, the difference is pretty small. To be the equivalent of the greenhouse gas emissions of one person's round flight between New York and London, you need to recycle 40,000 plastic bottles. And that's assuming you're flying economy. If you're in first class where you take up more space, it's closer to 100,000 plastic bottles. But even this statistic can overestimate the impact. According to Chris Goodall, the writer of How to Live a Low Carbon Life, many cities like New York instruct people to wash plastic bottles before recycling. But in the Environmental Protection Agency's data in the United States, it doesn't take into account the water used. And if you're using water that was, say, heated by a coal power plant, then you might in fact be polluting the world more by recycling those bottles. If you're more interested in information about plastics, I did a video on Canada's announcement of a single-use plastics ban, which you can check out here. 
Originally, one of the goals of recycling was to avoid a supposed waste crisis, and that crisis does still exist, but not in the way you'd expect. While landfills are filling up to capacity, we're not running out of space for our garbage so much as just not building more landfills. Landfills are, unsurprisingly, not very popular, and most people don't like living next to them. The concerns of smells, decaying hazardous materials, and just plain not looking good makes building any new landfills a massive headache. Despite the common image of landfills just being a place where garbage is dumped in open air, proper modern landfills are lined to protect against the leaking of hazardous material, and are often built in isolated areas that have enough space to buffer against the questionable smells and sights. While modern societies produce a truly staggering amount of waste, it's been calculated that all the trash generated in the next 1,000 years by Americans would fit in 0.1% of the land available for grazing. And that land wouldn't be permanently unavailable either. The United States Open Tennis Tournament is played where an old landfill used to be. Now one of the bigger issues of landfills is that large amounts of garbage decaying releases methane and other greenhouse gases, which is a significant problem. However, many newer landfills have started capturing methane to use to generate electricity and accordingly have minimal environmental impact by getting rid of most of the greenhouse gases. And modern incinerators, despite the common image as these black smoke belching facilities are, when properly built, release so few pollutants that they're widely used in environmentally conscious countries, like in Northern Europe and in Japan, for generating relatively clean electricity and disposing of waste at the same time. So as you can see, disposing of waste properly has a lot less environmental impact than most would think, and recycling operations have their own costs, like trucks that need to burn gas to collect recyclables, and pollution from the processes of recycling the objects themselves. So where does that leave us? Recycling is a very time-consuming and expensive process, and for many materials like plastics, it's wildly inefficient. As well compared to just throwing away trash for many items, the environmental impact just isn't very significant. However, recycling does have a significant environmental impact. But, and it's a big but, it depends on what's being recycled, how it's being recycled, and what's being done with it. While it may sound counterproductive, recycling more things can often be worse for the environment. This has to do with the fact that some materials are easier to recycle than others. Trying to turn garbage into gold costs a lot more than expected. We need to ask ourselves, what is the goal here? According to the Environmental Protection Agency's estimates regarding recycling, it saves the equivalent of 186 million metric tons of carbon dioxide in the United States, which is comparable to the emissions of 39 million cars. Of that greenhouse gas reduction, around 90% of it comes from just a few materials – paper, cardboard, and metals like aluminum. This is because recycling one ton of metal or paper saves about three tons in carbon dioxide, compared to making the materials from scratch, while recycling one ton of plastic saves only slightly more than one ton of carbon dioxide. For glass, you need to recycle three tons of glass to get one ton in savings. And for general waste, it takes a staggering 20 tons recycled to save just one ton in carbon dioxide. Excluding paper products and metals, the annual carbon savings in the United States from recycling everything in municipal trash, like plastics, glass, food, yard trimmings, textiles, rubber, and leathers, totals only to 0.2% of America's total carbon emissions. It makes sense to recycle commercial cardboard and some paper, as well as selected metals and plastics. But other materials rarely make sense, including food waste and other compostables. The zero waste goal makes no sense at all. It's very expensive with almost no real environmental benefit. The goal part of recycling is all too often left out, and this results in recycling itself often being promoted as the goal, with cities like New York, San Francisco, Seattle, and others moving towards zero waste policies, rather than it simply being one part of the solution. So too many people wind up simply trying to recycle more, while not being aware of the relative costs and benefits or what the actual point is. In New York City, one ton of trash now costs $300 more to recycle, rather than just burying the trash instead. This is costing millions of dollars, and is about half the entire budget of the New York Parks Department. That amount could be spent far more effectively on other methods to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, rather than inefficient recycling methods. So should you actually recycle? Well, unfortunately, the answer is it still depends. For example, you'll do a lot more good by recycling paper and aluminum cans than worrying about things like yogurt containers and food waste like banana peels. Where you live also matters as well. 
Here in Canada, we have a somewhat uh, inefficient recycling system, where a huge amount of recyclables aren't recycled properly due to a variety of reasons, like contamination, where paper covered in food residue can't be recycled. And this results in a large degree of inefficiency, to the point where only 9% of the plastic waste in Canada is actually recycled. So in Canada, recycling is not too impactful. However, if you live in a country like, say, Sweden, which has very good recycling and waste management systems, then you should absolutely participate in them. So recycling, when done properly and with the right materials, is an efficient and effective method in both saving money and in protecting the environment. When done poorly, it can be ineffective or even counterproductive. So we should focus on recycling the most efficient materials, like papers and metals, rather than chasing ever higher recycling rates. To deal with other waste, efficient management of landfills, incinerators, and other methods of waste disposal will be necessary. Achieving zero waste is simply impractical with our current technology. That does not mean it is impossible in the future, but we should focus on what is possible, practical, and implementable now in the present to protect the world we live in. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos, and hit that like button if you enjoyed this one. And if you're really interested, you can hit that bell down below to get notifications for all my new releases. Anyways, enjoy your day.